G'day folks, welcome to this week's episode of Learn to Paint TV. Rod Moore here from the Learn to Paint Academy with you again. And we've got a great little episode this week for you. We're going to be painting this old barn that I found when I was out driving around uh, Nimbin, um, sort of out from Byron Bay, New South Wales area. Came across this old barn in the morning light. So as always with the Moore Method of Painting, our objective is to place big shapes down on the canvas, right? So um, we'll start out with step one, our drawing. You get a little bit of the blue and the red together. Make up a, a dark tone there. Plenty of water into that. Gives it a nice ink like consistency, as you can see there. Okay. And it's about big shapes. Now I want to place this, um, this barn around about here. So basically it's a, a little box there. Comes across to about there. Okay. And then it's got a triangular triangular roof about there. That cuts off here and that runs this old sort of roof line runs through there to about there. And that's going to run to there like so. There's a post there. We've got the ground there. Okay, so that's our main shape for our building. Okay, so I start out with a box, put a little triangle on for a roof, and then extended out the, uh, the rickety old roof line there. Now there's details and things in here which we won't worry about at this stage. I just want the big shapes in the right spots. Okay, now immediately behind, and what I really liked about this composition is we've got this brighter tone tree that's sitting right there. Okay, that's going to be our warm tree, that one. Okay, so let's pop that in. Then behind that, we have another row of more distant background trees. Okay, and um, it comes into there like so. There's a bit of grass showing in there, and that's all in shadow. Okay. So that's the beauty of the more method of painting. You can see how simple it is to get our big shapes down, get our drawing started. We don't have to master the drawing right up front. We just need to know where our big shapes are. If we get the shapes right in the right spot, then we're looking good. So that means we can move on to step two, which is our blocking step. So for our blocking, I'm going to move to our bigger brush here now. I'll take a larger flat hair brush and I want to get my darkest darks in. Now, fortunately, um, our darkest darks are going to be fairly similar for a fair bit of this painting. So we'll get our blue and our red. Okay, we'll just mix those together. A little tiny pinhead of the yellow into that, but not too much. It has to be a small amount. Okay, mostly the blue and the red. Gonna make a nice rich dark for us. Get a little touch of water into that. We need to thin this paint down a little. Okay, we don't want this to be too thick, but it doesn't want to be quite as thin as that you know mix we had for the drawings. So keep that in mind. Okay. There we go. Now, if you're using acrylics, again, you probably don't need to thin this down too much if you're using acrylics, um, because it'll dry off by the time we get to step um, step three. So the shadow runs across there and it runs through. In fact, we'll just make this whole section in here shadow. Okay, and then we'll come in and we'll add the light into it there. So we've got this shadow cutting partly across the building there, which makes for an interesting um, effect. Okay, but then there is shadow running out through here, there. So we'll pop that in just on that side. We we'll probably put a little bit of shadow just in to anchor into the ground. Okay, and then that, uh, the bush immediately behind it, I'm gonna use the same shadow mix here, right? So this is going to be a slightly warmer bush or tree rather than the others. So we'll just go with a nice deep dark shadow underneath it. Okay. And try and create some interesting effects. Don't 
do a rounded tree. Okay, never seems to work out quite right. Let us just come in here to this tree behind here and we're going to ask ourselves, is that the right tone? I think it needs to be a little bit lighter. So a bit more white and a bit more blue, a little bit cooler. Probably wants to be more like that, I think. Just so we get sufficient amount of separation in there. That's probably better. We want to create a bit of atmosphere and depth in this painting. Okay, so I'm happy with that now. Just had a look and I think we're good now to just do block that in for the rest of these trees here. Okay, so just block that whole area in. We can put sky holes and things into the trees as we progress. That's going to create a really nice backdrop to make our um, old barn really pop out. Okay, looking good. So again, let's just block in all the way around. That there. And in fact, it probably only comes to about there because we're going to have grass in there. So I'll pull a bit of paper, a bit of paper towel there and I'll just pull some of that out. So this section in here. So those trees are further off in the distance. So therefore the horizon line is going to be a bit higher there. And we've also got a little bit that is just in there as well. We'll just pull out that, just to remind ourselves that's where that goes. So you can see that there's, automatically there's depth starting to build in this painting, right? It's we've not done much, and we've automatically got depth. So now what we're gonna do is, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put in a, a ground color for that grass. We want that grass to really hum and sing so in order to do that, the underpainting is going to be an orangey red, very thin paint, okay? You'd go a bit thicker if you're using acrylics because we'll let it dry. But see that, because I'm using oils, I'm gonna do that very thin paint. And uh, there's a fair bit of water in there, right? And all I wanna do is just put this down as an underpainting to harmonize with the green um, that we're going to paint the grasses with and that'll make that green really just pop a bit more because this red is or orangey red it's an earthy tone right so it's an Australian landscape so we do tend to get reddy earth tones but also it's a complement if you have a look at your color wheel red's a complement of the green so to get your greens to really hum using a bit of red there is a solid idea. Okay, a bit of grass popping through there. And we're looking good. This is going to turn out to be a nice little painting. Um, nearly all the detail work that we'll do will be in the barn. So that'll just free us up. The rest of it will just be background information and there won't be much work to do on that. So we'll just concentrate in on the barn. Okay, so we'll just get that in. You want to make sure that this, as you come in with the sky here now, you just go slightly thick paint. And that'll enable you to work over the edges of the uh, trees, because remember we use thinner paint for that block in there. Okay, so the key to working with oils is uh, paint consistency. And knowing when to use thin paint and thick paint. Especially if you're painting a la prima, which is you know basically what we do here at the uh, Learn to Paint Academy and Learn to Paint TV. A la prima simply means to do the painting in one sitting session. Now we don't always do that, and, and not technically, but that's the bait. We use a, a direct approach rather than building up layers. So 
So friends, that brings us to the end of step two of the more method of painting. You can see how we're building the painting up. We're getting our dark values in and, um, and our underpainting here for the grass. We're not doing any work in here apart from our darks, but we will come back obviously and um, you know spend most of our time in step three. We'll be bringing up the barn and putting the details in. So I'm going to take a break and allow this to dry off. Now, if you're using acrylics, this is especially important. You want to wait half an hour to an hour until that's fully dry. With the old water mixable oil paints or any oil paint, it's not going to fully dry, but it will set off a little bit and will go a little bit tacky. So in oils, tacky is good, good to work back into. In acrylic, tacky is not good, right? You want to wait till it's fully dry with, with acrylic. Um, but we're on track here. This is going good. I'm going to take a little break and I'll see you very shortly for step three. Okay, folks, welcome back. We're now going to do step three of the more method of painting. And this is where we start to bring this painting to life. We'll start out our work in and around the, uh, the shack here, and then we'll work back into the trees and the grass, and then we'll come back and do final details on the shack. So let us get underway. And I've just put out some more paint. I've still got my blue, ultramarine blue, permanent lizard and crimson, uh, yellow ochre, and I've added some cadmium yellow for a bit of boost. And first of all, let's get in the color of the uh, side of the building. So it's sort of a yellow ochre. Okay, we'll start with yellow ochre. It's a light value, so we'll add in some white. We'll get some blue into that as well. It needs to be a fair bit lighter than that. And then a little bit of red, so I'll just take some of that red there. And touch more, uh, touch more yellow ochre. Okay. Just looking close, let's just try some of that up there. So I'll just come into here. Probably not exactly right. of the cadmium yellow light in there just to warm it up a little bit too. That section there, it's a little bit on the yellow green side so we may adjust that uh, later on. But I'll keep it for now. Um, let's get a slightly smaller brush and I'll just run this down through here. Good, good. Okay, now let's work backwards into the uh, trees. We've got our brightest tree here, so we'll get our um, ultramarine blue. We'll get our cadmium yellow for that. And what we'll do is load up the tip of that brush, like so. See, I've got it loaded on the tip. And where's the light? The light's coming from over here. So let us just um, indicate that. And we just want to start building up some form in this tree. Okay. Make sure you don't paint out all those shadows. A little bit less over on that side. Because you can see the shadow on the right hand side of that uh, tree for sure. Now I'll try and just get some of this cadmium yellow on its own. Again, just lighting up that tip. Don't make it too thick on your brush because that's how it's going to end up on the canvas for sure. And if we come back to that color, that color is mostly blue. OK, 
Okay, so we'll mix that blue there. Had a little bit of red in it, had a little bit of the yellow ochre into it, and it had some white in it. So let's just get back. That's kind of like it there, right? You don't have to get it exact, but you want to get roughly the same value. Let me just test, right? I'll test that up there. You can see that's pretty close. I'm probably a little bit on the yellow side, but that's okay. So what we're going to do now, we're going to add yellow ochre, right? Into that. I'm going to add a little touch more of the red. And I'm going to add white. So what I'm doing is I'm warming it up and then I'm lightening the value. And what that'll give us is a highlight tone that's sort of muted. It's going to sit in the background pretty much um, without getting in the way of what we're doing here. So it's a muted green highlight color. Okay. But again, we want to make sure we keep plenty of that shadow in this tree in all these distant trees okay don't be tempted to fully paint out those trees that are those darks because you'll lose form doing that what I mean by form I mean you know like that three-dimensional effect that good painting has that's largely brought about because you've got darks, lights, and highlights in, in your trees and so on. Okay, I might just shift the tone of it a little bit, so I'll add in a touch of that cadmium yellow, and a little more white, and a little pinhead of the red, just to make it slightly different. Okay. And get those soft edges as you clip it up into the sky there. Now notice how the main tree there, see how that's just so much more vibrant and it's definitely um, appears closer to us. Just because we understand the, you know, the keys to aerial perspective and so on, which is what we're applying here. Okay, get a little pinhead of the red. It's always good to put a touch of red into your greens because what that'll do is gray it slightly. Okay, a little bit of the yellow ochre. And that's, that's a good tone there, I'm happy with that. What, why I wanted to mix that up was this, this background here. I don't want it to be too punchy, but it needs to be a vibrant green because it is quite strong, vibrant greens. We'll just paint that into that background section there and we'll paint it in here as well. like so okay a couple of other little spots in sneaky through the barn now so I'll go for a smaller brush it was loaded up and I'm just gonna have to pick out where I think that's going to be so I think it's round about there And then that's going to run all the way to there. And we then have another little spot which is around about here. Okay, like so. Alright, so they're going to be looking through the barn towards the grass out the back there. Now, let's get that grass a little bit more vibrant, more of the cadmium yellow light, little pin out of the water to make it flow, a little touch more of the yellow ochre, okay. And load that brush up, see on the side there, and I'm gonna come across here and just up to that shadow, I'm just going to drag that brush across because I've got a nice little canvas texture. It's going to drag that paint off, but it's going to break up a little bit as well. And then that underpainting is going to come through. Perfect. It's just what we want. Okay. It pulls that underpainting through and it creates some interesting effects. As opposed to if we just left that as white canvas then it's not going to work, is it? 
you know, little white specks poking through. Whereas we've got that ready orange, which we know is a complement of our greens. Okay, we've also got the same basic three colors, four colors in the mix. You know, it's a limited palette, so that helps us create further harmony in what we're doing. Color harmony. Okay. Get a little bit more of the yellow ochre, a little bit more of the cad, uh, the lizard crimson, and the chamomile ch yellow. So I'm thick paint now. And notice I do some horizontal dragging and also some vertical strokes as well to create the effects of grass in there. Now, just so happens that that red brown roof color, same color combinations we've already used. So our lizard crimson here, okay, and our yellow ochre. How about that? Okay, that's too red. It needs to be slightly on the brown side. It's a rusty old roof, so add a bit more yellow ochre. And that's possibly too yellow ochre-y. I'll add back some more red. Okay. Now it's slightly a brownish, so the way we get to the brown is we just come in with a pinhead of the blue. Okay, so blue is obviously not dominant in that um, rust colour, that brown colour, but it's there because just the red and the yellow on its own, we couldn't quite get to the colour we wanted. Okay, so let me just run this along the top here. And then we just run this down. Like so. Notice the downward strokes because it's old corrugated iron sheets. And the direction of the brush marks will help tell the story. Now there are some lighter color ones in there. It looks like they've replaced some of those sheets over the years. So we'll get those in shortly. Bows out a little bit just there. Like so, okay. Come back to my small brush here, a little small flat brush. I'm going to give it a clean, and then we need to get a tone, which is push this one back more yellow, and then we get some light into that. There we go. That's looking like a reasonably good tone right there. Could be a touch redder, just a little touch red. Okay. Now the key here is I'll pull the paint out of that brush, right? The key is I just want to get that tip loaded with paint. So I twist the paintbrush back and forward and I just work on getting the tip of it. And that also then pulls the hairs together a little bit. Okay, so there is just in here. A couple of old bits of wood that are catching the light and a post there. Okay, there's a post here. Holding up that end, although we're going to need to put a dark on that post, I feel. But it's there. There's some things happening here. There's a bottom of a post there that's poking through. I'll probably take that tone and just work it into some of this in here. It is a bit green looking now, now that we've developed the painting a bit more. Work that in there. Then we've got, oh, I don't know what it is, some old rusty looking bits and pieces in here. I'll just pop in 
it looks like fishing like crepe pots or something in there so we don't have to describe it perfectly just a few little indications of marks and and what that'll tell us is that hey this is an old sort of barn with lots of stuff just laying around and there's something out the back which is in dark so I'll take a dark and lighten it back a little bit and that's sort of like sitting in around about there perhaps a couple of darks dark marks like I know that there's a dark running through these um, weatherboards here different cracks and things in the weatherboards. A couple of uh, tree trunks out the back there. So we can take that same tone if we wanted to and we can use that um, it's not exactly right but it just makes it easier to repurpose the same tone that ties in with what we're doing here there's a, an old log that's sort of laying down there. Okay, and I want to get a slightly different tone now. Red into that to warm it. Okay, something like that. I'll take some of that and let us put that in there. Same colors I've been using all the way along. You just mix up a earthy tone like so. Scrap it all up there. And then remember I left this little patch here. So what I want to do is just create a little sense of some, um, some earth here. Maybe it's a path. Maybe that path just sort of meanders its way up through there. Now shift that tone a little bit so we'll get a little bit redder. You don't want to just block in a section like that and then just leave it with that one tone. Okay, so if I just work back over it in parts, which is a slightly shifted tone, then that um, then that's a good thing, yeah. So it just creates a little bit of a path walking that way. Now it kind of feels to me like it wants just a little finishing detail work um, mix up a dark, our blue and our red okay there's a bit of water on the palette there so we can take advantage of that because we want these fence post tone to be or well, the mixture of the paint to be fairly fluid take our little rigger brush load it up and now let's just think we probably Maybe just uh, along this path here, we'll just add in fence post or two. Okay, put a little supporting thing there. We'll pop one there, a couple there. And let's suggest some fence posts out the back. Maybe there's a gate there. Okay, stand back and have a look. This one needs a little bit more work. Pop one there. And then we probably need, we've got light pretty much coming from over that side. So a little touch of the shadow is always good. Okay, now that's, they're a little bit dark, so we'll add a light side to them. And then I think we're pretty well done. The, 
the highlight color is the same as what we used in the path. Done in a beginner style using the more method of painting folks this is a painting that anyone can have a go at um, you know we've created our own little version of it we haven't copied it exactly but we've certainly um, got the essence of it you know the feel of it an old rundown barn in the country on a farm nice background trees and we haven't copied the trees exactly we've just utilized our uh, skill to develop a, just a background row of trees there and I think it's a nice little painting. And if you like Australian landscapes or any type of landscapes, then you'll enjoy doing this painting. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Um, I've certainly enjoyed doing it. Make sure you check out every episode of Learn to Paint TV by going to www.learntopaint.tv. And if you haven't done so already, register for the free course that we have for you, which goes into the more method of painting in more detail. And that's what we've used here is the more method of painting. Um, and there's four or five different painting demonstrations like this one in full detail that you can uh, go through and, and really have a go at painting those. So the web address is underneath me here on the screen. Um, it's at the Learn to Paint Academy. So we look forward to seeing you over there. Happy painting until next time and uh, thanks for watching. Cheers. Mm -hmm.